Welcome to the High Voltage Lighter Lecture Vehicle Channel. I still get lots of questions on PBSHD motors for fat bikes. So seeing as though I'm putting my own fat bike build back together, I thought in this video, I'll show everybody what they're up against. This is the very first e-bike I built using the PBSHD, and it was also probably one of the most tricky to get right. It's worth doing though, because having a beast of an electric fat bike is really one of the most amazing experiences that you can have. The first thing to note with the fat bike is like the massive width of the chain stays here. They need to be this wide to fit these massive tires, which I think are 4.6 inches. If you look here, you can see the problem right away. You have a gap here that you need to use spaces in and it's caused by the gear reduction striking the chain stay here. This is something that prevents you using, say, the 100 millimeter version, uh, because by forcing it out away from the bottom bracket, you can see here that you have very, very little threads. There'd be, by the time you put the bracket on, there'd be virtually nothing. And then you would have a crank that was completely out of place compared to the crank on this side. So it's just not, not gonna work. And the 78 mil one at all, there'll be no threads at all to see. So you have to use the 120 millimeter motor with this one. Uh, some fat bike frames might not be quite as wide and you might be able to use the 100 millimeter, but for most fat bikes, you are gonna need the full 120 millimeter BBSHD. So in order to get this motor to fit nicely and clear the chain stays, I'm gonna use a couple of spacers, which just slide on like this. And now I'll fit the motor to the bike and you can see it there. So with those two spacers in there, the motor is nice and snug against this side of the bottom bracket. And you can see that there is clearance to this chain stay here. This does create issues for your chain line at the back, but I'll get onto that in a slightly different video. So the next thing to talk about is the lock ring plates. And with the BBSHD, it has these little teeth that are stamped into it. And they, you can actually see the marks here on my bottom bracket. But when this goes on, these teeth cut into the bottom bracket. They certainly do on an aluminum frame, less so on a steel frame, but they cut in and when it's torqued down, they hold the motor in place. And I used to think that these teeth were, were critical, but since I've been doing this a while, I've noticed that a lot of brackets, like this is one from the 2.7 and CYC, they're completely smooth. And I've not had motors fall down either with, with any of these motors. So it really comes down to two things. Number one thing is making sure that it is perfectly flat with the bottom bracket, right? So there is a full surface contact of area with this part. And the second part is putting it on with a good 80 to 90 foot pounds of torque and using a torque wrench to verify that you've done that. And I haven't had a motor come loose at 4,000 watts and I haven't had a motor come loose at 1,500 watts on any of them. So it's a case of making sure there's a good solid contact with this and I'll talk about how you can do some other tips for that as well. So the next thing to look at is the actual spacing of this lock ring plate. And we've got the spacing offset on that side. So there's a corresponding offset that you have to get right on this side. Um, but the first thing is to get this in the right place. And you need to make sure this goes on first. But if you notice here, that means that the threads don't go up to the plate. So when I put the lock ring on, it's not gonna bite properly. So I'm gonna to have to use another spacer on this side. So on this side, I'm using another spacer and it's important to put it on the outside of the lock ring plate. So that this plate is pushed firmly in there. And then we need to figure out what we do to space this part out. And I actually use washers with my BBSHD because it was easier to get a stack of washers and find the exact distance because none of the parts and none of the spaces they sent were quite the right ones. So I'll show you what I've got there as well. So this is basically what I have is a bolt with a stack of washers on it. And this is gonna bridge the gap between the plate and the motor. Um, another important thing with this is that you want to get these screwed in but you don't want to tighten these up until you've tightened up the lock ring plate. Because if you tighten these first and it puts the lock ring plate at a slight angle, you're not going to get a flush contact with the bottom bracket. And that's going to mean the motor might come loose. So I find the least painful way of doing this rather than 
holding them next to the motor and trying to feed bolts through and dropping washes everywhere is to preload the washes onto there and then slip it over and get the bolts tightened uh, just a few turns. You might find that you need to buy new M6 bolts that are longer to get a good contact into the holes there because the ones when I got them originally, they weren't long enough. So this is the completed assembly before tightening everything down. And it's just worth it, making sure that you've got a really nice flush finish with the bottom of this. And if it's not quite right, um, adjust the amount of washes or the washer thicknesses, anything to make sure that it's, it's as neat as possible. And then you're good to get this secured. And for this build, we're actually gonna be using the Lecky one nut um, because you can actually use this with a standard park tool, bottom bracket tool, uh, rather than having to use the custom uh, Bafang tool. So this is a, a two-stage process and uh, the way it works is that you, you thread this on and you snug it up and then there are two little Allen holes here. And then what they do is they compress this nut together and squeeze the threads and that acts as the locking mechanism rather than you using a second locking ring. And it also has this nice color and that's gonna match the, the other side of the motor there. So I've threaded this on to be hand tight and then I'm gonna be using my torque wrench here to do the rest. Um, I am using an adapter piece on the end and then this is the, the park tool thing that you're gonna to need to use for, for the bond bracket and that slides. Well, it doesn't slide over the top, does it? So uh, I've got the, the Lecky one nut on here and um, I believe in honesty here. So I, I, I think I've made a bit of a snafu here um, and I'm gonna have to figure a way around um, because it's not gonna go over the top and bite with these. And I would like to use this and I really wanna get it on with the proper amount of torque, otherwise this is gonna work loose. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is loosen the other side and pull the axle shaft out here, um, pull the crankshaft out, and then I should be able to torque the motor on and then reassemble it, which is um, an interesting pain in the butt. I don't know if there's a, a different version of this tool that has more of a, a recess in it. I, I don't think so though. So that, that is an interesting conundrum. Um, yeah, I would have to space it out considerably further, I guess is, is the other option. Um, to bring it flusher to the surface. Uh, but I think uh, what I'm gonna do is pull the, uh, pull the axle. So now I have the axle out of the way, we can get that tool nicely fitted on there, which is gonna let me use the torque wrench, which is really important to make sure this motor doesn't move. So I'm gonna put this on with 85, 90 foot pounds of torque and that's gonna lock it into place. And then we will do up these here and that will keep it in place. And then I'll get the axle back in and that will be the motor installed. So I like to do this with the bike on its back because when you're then talking the motor, the turn is gonna to wanna to put it into the right position rather than you doing it on a stand. And then you have to hold the motor in the right position. So it just makes sure it's right where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna put this on now with a decent amount of force here. There we go. So that's 90 foot pounds. And that is gonna keep that on there nicely for me. It never came off before. I don't expect it's gonna do it now. And the last part is to get these done up here and that'll keep everything on for me. So now these are all tight. There is one last task and that's to compress the outer part of the Lecky one nut in on the threads and that will do the lock part and it'll prevent it from coming loose. Not that I think it's gonna anyway. So that's the BBSHD back on the bike, the axles back in, and it's looking very nice. And it just goes to show with the RY e-bikes that you have to think on your feet sometimes. And I'm not gonna like do this perfect video where I pretend you know that I get everything right the first time because I don't get everything right the first time, as you can see here. 
and we had to pull the axle in order to get that secured on properly. But it is very, very important to get this secured on properly. So hopefully this video helped a few people with fat bikes that I wanted to use this kind of motor and help you pick the right size of motor and explain why you need to get that right size of motor. And what I did when I originally did this was quite a lot of research into it. And I made sure that I had all the spaces and a wide range of things ready for me when I got the bike. So I was able to get this on pretty quick, but I did spend a long time researching different parts and I ended up with a pile of parts that I didn't use. So hopefully this will help people choose which parts they need. You can find spaces for these online. Um, I do actually print some stuff these days using polycarbonate as well. So that's an option too. So that's the BBS HD right now. So the next video I'm going to do on this bike, uh, we're going to have a look at the chain line and how I'm going to be hopefully getting a nice single speed setup to the back there. And that'll use a 42 up front and like a 42 at the back or maybe a 40T at the back. I might try a 40T and see how that looks. So that'll explain how to get a nice straight chain line back to the rear cassette because that is another thing when you're using the high power BBS HDs that you want to get absolutely bang on. So anyway, thanks for watching. And if you've got any questions on installing BBS HDs, that kind of thing, uh, let me know in the comments. And you're also most welcome to join our Discord channel and we'll give you lots of help on building a really cool e-bike on there as well. So thanks for watching and a special thanks to all the channel members. Cheers.